Hey everybody, Kevin Barnett back in the Carbide 3D Studio and welcome to another long form design video. My goal with these videos is to increase your understanding of the software and get an insight into how I think about projects. I spend a lot of time in Carbide Create. 99% of what I make here at HQ is made in Carbide Create. So a lot of things catch my eye that maybe won't catch your eye and hopefully you get a couple of tips as we go through this project. We're gonna go through a file that was sent to me via our support queue. And immediately upon opening it, a few things jump out to me that say this person is a little bit further back on the CNC journey than I am. And that's not a negative. Everyone is somewhere along this path. It's a complex system. If you've been doing CNC for a little while, you know that from software to hardware to the actual implementation into whatever material it is you're cutting, there's a lot to understand. So let's dive in. There were some Jeep front drop trays that were sent into us. This is a whole array of these particular drop trays and I'll pop myself up in the corner. There we are. These drop trays are all laid out. They're all identical. So I wanna start with just one. And if you zoom in right away, what catches my eye is that this is probably a trace of a Jeep front. This is probably off a photograph. Because a trace works off of individual pixels, it's difficult to get a complex shape out of a photograph to come out right when you're looking for nice clean lines. And let me show you what I mean here by taking a look at this Jeep. Let me increase the threshold here and we'll go ahead and trace the image. This is an actual photograph of a Jeep and as we bring it into the software and into this file, what you're gonna notice is that it has some extraneous pieces in it. It's got some clean lines and some lines off to the side and depending upon the file that you choose, the picture that you choose, you're gonna get varying results. So if I look here at the grill, it is not actually a copy. Each one is a little bit different because the pixelation in the photo, the brightness of the pixel is a little bit different in each one of these particular grill pieces. But if I'm making something like a drop tray, I definitely want all of these grill pieces here in the middle to be identical. We're gonna work with some node editing, some symmetrical design concepts. We'll use the offset path tool. We'll go into the tool pathing and I'll show you how to lay out an entire production run once we have a shape that we really like. Now that said, I would not go ahead and set up a production run if I haven't already run off a single one of these. I would make one and probably end up making that one three times before I have a finalized design that I'm gonna do an entire sheet of. Many of you need to go through that prototyping process. Don't get impatient. I know, I get impatient too. I get very focused on, I want this thing to be out and I have customers who want it. And I, uh, relax, make it right the first time, frustrate yourself less. All right, let's dive into this thing again here. Looking at what was initially here, what caught my eye is the fact that none of these headlights nor running lights are circular. Not one of the grill sections is the same. And this outer outline, if you look at this, it is not symmetrical either. The left side is a lot smoother than the right side. Let's set about changing all this. It's not that hard. We're gonna work with layers and you're gonna have layers throughout both in the design process as well as the tooling process, the tool pathing. I'm gonna make a layer and this is gonna be our overlay layer. As we're designing, I'm gonna put everything on that layer and I'm gonna make it dark green because that's just an easy color to see. And I'm gonna activate this layer. I'll hit okay. Everything I draw now is gonna end up on that layer. So first, let's make a circle. And we'll make our first one right here. And we'll try and make it, let me take snapping off here. Snap to grid sometimes is kind of a hassle. Let's resize this here. We'll pull that right on top of there. And you can already see the lack of circularity, if that's a word, of the previous design. It is not at all circular. And for me, that's not acceptable. So we have a good sized circle there. Let's now make a second circle down here for our running light. That's about right. So now we have two parts that we like. They're nice and circular and all set. Next, let's look at the grill lines. And for the purposes of us designing here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock this back layer. So go into the L key, hot key L, and I'm going to lock that back layer. So now I can't select it, but I can still design on top of it. I'm gonna use a rectangle here for the grill. And you might wonder, why would you use a rectangle? Well, the answer is because if you fill it, it, you can actually make it look very much like a grill. So let's get our width right there, that's not too bad. 
hit done. And now you see it has square corners for the moment. Let's go to fill it, 0.23 of an inch, 0.25 of an inch. That looks pretty good, 0.25. We're getting a nice smooth radius on the top of our rectangle. We're getting something resembling that grill feature. What if we went down to 0.1? You can see how that changes. We get just radius on each corner, but if we go back to 0.25, those radiuses from the corner end up joining one another into a nice smooth transition here and a round end that looks a lot like our grill. Now, you'll say, okay, it's not long enough. Easily solved. Over to the resize and we'll pull it long. And there, we have one of the grill portions all set up that we think oh, looks pretty good. And we know that and we can get a nice clean look at it by hiding our back layer. Here's our basic layout. That's what we're starting with. Let's bring the other layer back. All right, that layer is now back. Let's talk about these outer outlines next. And for that, we will unlock this layer. And you can unlock and relock up to you, depending upon where you're selecting and how much you're selecting, you might wanna be unlocking portions of a design to make it easier to select the portions you're actually working with. Hot key L gets there pretty quick. All right, this inner outline is gonna be the basis point for our outer outline. So this inner outline, is different on the left side than it is on the right side. I want something that's completely symmetrical. For that, I'm first going to create another circle. I'm going to take it from the center of our lights and I'm going to pull it all the way up here until it overlaps with the existing top of the grill. And that might be a little bit too far. Let's delete that and try it again. Let's start again. Go from the center. I think that might look pretty good, that thickness. Right there, okay, fine, fine. We get the intersection. We have an intersection down here as well. Let's look at doing a boolean between these two parts. If I keep just the outer outline of the entire boolean, I say okay, and now I have a nice perfect radius here. But I don't have what I want in this area here. I'm still maintaining this particular relationship but this doesn't look right, right there. Remember with any details that whatever you see, your client is probably not gonna see. Now there's different levels of this. Obviously what I'm working on right now is refining some of those features. You're gonna dive into the minutia of note editing and you're gonna then zoom back out and take a look at what your clients are gonna see. Remember to balance that out with your time and your, eh, let's be frank, OCD with the design, that's for me. So. Let's node edit right now. And you see a whole bunch of nodes in here that could potentially cloud what's going on. One of the things I like to do is just delete the nodes. Highlight them and hit D. And it will take them right out. Let's hit done. And now that transition is much, much better. In fact, I could probably take a couple more out. I could probably mess with this just a little bit as it has kind of a little tuck into it. So you can look at it and go, okay, where do I want to pull them? And how do I want them to relate? And how much you want to mess with this again is a big question. Same thing up here. See how we get this little divot? Let's take that divot out. Let's go to the top of the arc, which is probably this node right here. And let's start getting rid of nodes. We're going to delete that. We're going to delete those. And now we have a straight shot across the top. One of the things about a Jeep, it does have a slight arc to it. So let's give it a slight arc. We'll take this and pull it up just ever so slightly like that. And I think that looks, that looks all right. Hold that out. And this is where artistry comes in. Now we have not a bad line. We've got a little arc on the top there. It looks a lot like a Jeep. It's coming off at this point here around the light. We've got a little divot. I don't know, is that good? You could, you could fiddle with that intersection a bunch. For me, I'm happy right now. That looks, that looks decent, it looks decent. Let's go to the bottom here and we're gonna do a little more node editing. So at the bottom here, we're gonna add a node and we're gonna add it, we're gonna hope at the same point as the node above. And those should be approximate now. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna to change to millimeters. And I'm gonna change my grid size to one millimeter. I'm gonna make sure it's one millimeter so I can make all kind of finite adjustments here to my design. And yes, I like millimeters. If you like inches and thousands and all kinds of weird math, 
okay, you're an American, I guess. Listen, when it gets down to small time on your designs, go to metric. It's so much easier to do the calculations. I know it's weird to think in big items in Imperial and small items in metric, but honestly, when you're designing, for me, maybe for you, it's much, much easier to think of millimeters rather than thinking of a 32nd, a 16th, a 64th. I mean, my God, let's make it more confusing. All right, let's get into how to position this, these parts now. Enough ranting, enough ranting. All right, we have our arc that's gonna go up to that particular node. Let's cut the node right there. We're gonna cut the vector right there. Let's go down here and let's cut the vector here. All right, so now we've cut the vector. We wanna create symmetry between the left side and the right side. We gotta get rid of that right side for the moment. Let's make sure that this particular structure is everything we want it to be. We want a flat line across the bottom and we want that slight arc on the top. So let's make sure we have a flat line on the bottom. For that, let it, let's select all of our parts that we're currently working with. We don't want that part. Let's get rid of that guy, how about? Let's get rid of this guy for confusion's sake. We got our light, our running light, and now we're gonna select our grill. We have all the new parts that we've made and we're gonna select that as well. Now, I wanna position this, let's turn snapping back on. Snap to grid can be very helpful. We're gonna snap that to the grid. We're not gonna worry about this outside for the moment. And now we wanna node edit. All these parts is fine. Let's make sure that this is somewhere near the middle. I think that might be the middle of where we're at, right? Let's go here and we take our slight arc. Let's make our arc slide all the way to the middle, right to there. And it looks like those two nodes are right at the same level here. We can check it by just throwing in a shape. Let's throw in a rectangle here and let's grab it by the corner node and we'll grab it and throw it on there and we'll go down here. That's right clicking to get us down there and we see that we're short here by one. Node edit. We're gonna pull this right to there. We're gonna take that as more or less our middle point and get rid of this little shape. Don't be afraid to use shapes as guides, as measurements, as an understanding of aligning some parts. You can do that with the nodes. It's just one way to work in the software. Let me get rid of this previous grill part as well. All right, so we now have one half of a Jeep grill that I think looks better. Let's duplicate that half. We're gonna get rid of this group. Let's take our current design items. We're gonna Command C, Command V, or that's Control if you're working in Windows, right? We'll Command V those out, and now we will flip it sideways, and let's drag it over here and see how we're lining up. Look, at that's lining up quite nicely, actually. We're quite close to perfect in terms of the previous dimensions. Remember, you're the artist. You can do whatever you want. Even if you're altering somebody else's file, you are not bound by those dimensions. You are not bound by a single millimeter on the front end of a Jeep. You're just trying to evoke the shape of a Jeep, all right? So now I have a second half. I've got a nice little arc at the top. I've got straight across on the bottom. Let's delete these old portions as well. We no longer need those. And let me grab all of these parts and maybe go one more to the right. Okay, now they're separated ever so slightly. Let me see if I can join. I'm gonna take both the outer halves and I'm gonna tell it to heal. Ah, but they're not. They're not close enough, look at that. They're separated by a millimeter, that's not gonna be enough. Let's bring them back. Let's just Command Z, we're right back. Now, because it's a contextual menu, we have the join vectors as an option. I click that join vectors and now our outer outline is one continuous piece of a shape that is completely symmetrical. We're totally symmetrical side to side. Now we need to replace our grill. Here's where you get to see a tool that's brand new to Carbide Create and ever so important. Something we've been pushing for for a while. Select the center grill, Command C, Command V, 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 because we need a few more of them, right? Let's grab all five of these parts and we'll do alignment 
vertical. So they're all the same in the same vertical plane. They're all aligned there. Now, this is where you click align again. You go down to the bottom and we have space items horizontally and space items vertically. Here we're going to utilize horizontal and it's going to evenly space all of your vectors between the leftmost and the rightmost vector. Look at that. One click and we're all set in that defined space. Love that. Missed that whenever I was trying to lay something out in other designs. Now we have a complete Jeep front. I'm really happy with that. Sometimes you want to check your symmetry. You want to grab all those inner portions, group them together and grab your outer portion and then tell it to center horizontally. Okay, it didn't even move. We're good there. Let's ungroup this group here. What about this outer outline? You noticed before the outer outline looked like it was from the offset path tool. And I know that because it exactly followed the old inner outline that was there for that drop tray. You know, a drop tray has a pocket in the middle and then has an edge that's thick on top so you have a little edge to your tray. So let's get rid of this outer outline. And we're gonna go use the offset path tool. How much of an offset path do we want? Well, that's a good question. How about 10 millimeters? Outside and hit apply. Now, we don't have any guide there. We're gonna to have to choose on our own because we don't have the previous guide. What if we wanted to leave that there? We could do that. Click on it, outside 10 millimeters, hit apply. Well, it's about the same. It's about the same. We've thickened this upper part, but yeah, it's about right. So let's go with 10 millimeters. There, does that look like a Jeep? That looks like a Jeep to me. I think that's better. Let's put them side by side. Let's grab this guy, bring it in, and you be the judge as to which one of these would make a better drop tray item if you're looking to increase your sales and charge more for the stuff you're making. I assume this should be made in hardwood. If it's a drop tray, probably hardwood's a good idea. All right, one thing we don't have is tabs. Let's add on some tabs. You wanna add tabs on the flat portions of your design at all times you can possibly make that happen. Keep it off the radiuses, the curves, because it's harder to file accurately and remove accurately, but sometimes you won't have a choice, it'll be a circular item. That's just the way it is. I've applied some tabs. All right, now, what do we wanna do? We wanna make a sheet of these? All right, let's delete all these old ones. Get rid of those. And before we proceed further, let's do a little bit of grouping here. I'm gonna group the lights together as one group because I'm gonna cut them to one depth. I'm gonna group my grill as another group. And then, I'm gonna to have to go back and group all the inner and outer outlines of my items. So let's start with this. Let's move some things to some layers too. We're gonna to group them and we're gonna move them to layers. Both can be helpful in different situations. Layers, let's do the lights and hit okay. And that's fine color. And we can say move selection to layer, hit okay. And you notice these are in red now. Let's grab our grill. We're gonna say L, hotkey L, add a layer. We're gonna call this the grills. Hit okay, and that mustard color is pretty good too. Move selection to layer. All right, we now have things on different layers and we have them as different groups. Here's a tricky thing. This is gonna be a guide at first because we're gonna to have to move everything from the active layer where we paste everything into our production run. We're gonna move them back to the appropriate layers here in a second. Let's grab the whole thing and we'll just paste, 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 paste. Watch this now. I wanna show you something. I just had a thought. Software, listen, I'm always thinking of things in the software. I'm doing things sometimes for the first time. You should be. You should be innovating on what you're doing, right? You should be asking yourself, can the software do this? Can I figure out how to do this? Happens to me too. Remember, you're just somewhere along that CNC journey. You're not all the way to the end. You're never all the way to the end, all right? I wanna do something here. I wanna group, and it's gonna destroy my layers, but I'm okay with that for the moment. Let's group, 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 and group. Let's do 
the same alignment we just did with the grill pieces, right? Let's grab this guy, we'll space him out here. We're gonna leave about the same distance vertically. So we wanna make sure I didn't move them, there we go. And then I wanna space vertically even. Look at that, we have them all spaced perfectly vertical top to bottom. And furthermore, get rid of that whole group. Let's group this group here. All right, and then we're gonna paste, paste, paste. We're gonna see if we can get four of them on here. Let's grab this guy and bring them down to the edge. And now we're gonna get all four here. We're gonna align them vertically first, and then we're gonna space horizontally. And we don't have space for it. Bummer. What a bummer. All right, that is not going to work. But it's worth a try. Get rid of that. This is why they were rotated before in the previous design. Let's rotate them 90 degrees. Pull them down. I think we'll get more efficient use here out of our stock, the way it was defined. Now, if you have a different piece of stock, you can always do that. All right, ungroup. Grab this one. Let's try the same methodology here. All these are groups. We're gonna align them in the vertical plane and then we're gonna evenly distribute them horizontal plane. That looks pretty good and I'll bet, based on the previous file, we can get two of those along here. And then we can get a couple along the top. Let's rotate them all now. Negative 90 degrees. We'll grab them as groups and we'll lay them out here. You know, you could squeeze a little bit more space if you flip this, watch. We can get a little more space out of our stock by pulling everything that way, a little bit more. All right, let's pull these down. This is always how it goes. When I make projects, you wouldn't believe the time I spend trying to figure out, can I do this? Can I make this happen? Is this the right approach? All the time like that. All right, there's our layout again. We've completely redefined the Jeep front and we've redone the layout. We flipped these to see if we can tuck them in a little bit further. Let's head off to the tool pathing. The toolpathing was another dead giveaway to the experience of the CNC operator here or the designer. A few things. One, everything was just named Pocket Toolpath 2, Pocket Toolpath 3, Contour Toolpath 1. Name your toolpaths. You need to name your layers, which is what we did here, and you need to name your toolpaths. Organization is incredibly important, especially as your designs get more complex and you want to establish good habits now. Same thing with toolpathing. Two, with the tabs that were there, those tabs were set at 12 millimeters wide by three millimeters thick. That's huge. You don't need 12 millimeters wide. It's just the stock setting to be sure nothing falls out. If you're working with pine, I'd go three or four wide. I'd go three deep. Sometimes two, depending upon how good your measurements are. But those tabs aren't nearly as strong as a maple or a walnut tab, for instance. Maple or walnut tab, you can go two wide by two thick and then you have less material to cut off, but it's still going to remain strong. Because of the material you're using, we have a nice video called Material Resolution. This kind of applies to that. Knowing more about the materials you're cutting is important. Check that video out too. Let's take a look at our pocket tool pads. So they're empty because we've already gotten rid of all those other vectors to which they apply, and that's fine. The pocket tool path in this case was meant to apply to the inner contours here of each one of these Jeep drop trays, which reminds me, we didn't do our layers. Let's go back to the design. We need to ungroup all of these pieces now that they've been now that they've been established. Let's see if we can grab them here. We'll ungroup everything. Everything's been ungrouped. Perfect. Let's move some stuff to layers. We still have our our grills should have still been groups, but I guess since I ungrouped everything, I have to regroup the grills. In some cases, yes. There, we're good. Grill, 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 all the way across. That one is not there. Groups are incredibly important to your design success, just as layers are. 
Grouping and ungrouping, it may seem like wasted time. It is not wasted time. This is time that you should spend because it will help you in selecting your items, aligning your items, and toolpathing different sections of your design. It is incredibly important to learn the concepts of how to work with groups, and the only way to do that is to do it a bunch. All right, grab all of our grills. Holding down the shift key. Layer, we already have our grills layer from before. Move selection to layer, that's nice and easy. Lights, I think we're gonna have a similar problem here with our groups. Let's group that. We're gonna have to go through and regroup a bunch of stuff here because our groups got a little messed up. But you know what? That's all right. It's just a few clicks away. Make sure you have some music on, make sure you're entertaining yourself. Don't be in such a hurry. Don't take on more business than you can handle. Just a little bit more business than you can handle, okay? Just a little bit. Not a lot, not a lot, just a little bit. Keep yourself pushing. Keep yourself pushing your designs, your making capability, your efficiency. I like all that, I like all that. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually eliminating some of these that have kind of half groups. I'm just getting rid of the groups and then regrouping. And some of these are okay. Some of these are all set. Grab those. All right, now let's grab all of our lights just as we did our grills and we're gonna move them back to the lights layer. All this takes time. An original design taking 30, 40 minutes, an hour is perfectly normal. Layers, lights, move selection to layer. Okay, we're there. Before we get to toolpathing, let's make sure that all of our inner edges are grouped together. It's gonna to make it much easier to assign the toolpathing. Press the group there. We'll get all of our outer outlines as well and get them into a group. And you can mess with the layout a little bit, make sure it's efficient, make sure it's what you want, make sure it's maximizing your material. Our first priority is going to be making the pockets that will be the main inset for the drop tray itself. Pocketing toolpath number one. So I'm gonna change the vectors and I'm gonna use the current selection. Now they have it set to 12.7 millimeters. Okay, fine, I get it. When you did it in inches, it made perfect sense. Here it's in millimeters, it doesn't make as much sense. I'm just gonna to go to 13 millimeters. I'm gonna use ramping because I have it. It's in Car by Create Pro. I think it's a pretty compelling bit of software for very little money, $10 a month will net you a bunch of really useful tools, up to you. And I'm gonna name it. This is my main inset pockets. Caught in a little extra capital there. Main inset pockets. And I'm going to use a different tool. I'm going to use a end mill that I have on hand, a 251 down cut end mill. I'm gonna crank up the speed a little bit and crank up the speed horizontally a little bit. And we're gonna go 500 because we can plunge. We'll go down a little bit on the depth and we'll see how that works out in terms of time. Main inset pockets, 374 minutes, not acceptable. <laughs> Here's where a bull bit comes in handy, all right? Measure the bull bit, 19.18 millimeters, 0.755 of an inch, three quarters of an inch. That's gonna cut a lot faster than a quarter of an inch. Matter of fact, three times faster. So let's see if we can add in a bowl bit here to our tools. Let's add a bowl bit. Let's create a new, a new tool. End mill, we'll do it in inches. Bowl bit, three quarters. Tool number, 65 randomly assigned with 0.75. I like that. Plunge rate eight, feed rate 10. So let's go feed rate of 2000 equals 78. So we're looking at 80, that's fine. We'll go 80 there. That's the, that's the expression editor that you can use. And RPMs, let's spin it at 24,000. Let's just crank it up. The depth of cut. Let's go with 1.75 millimeters, 0.069, that's fine, that'll work. 
model vendor doesn't matter hit OK so now we can select our bull bit three quarters standard step over is half of that value Hit OK this should cut our time down substantially it does 105 minutes now to create that particular outline all right pocketing toolpath now pocketing toolpath three here so named is going to be the pocketing toolpath for one of these features inside the bottom of our tray Let's go ahead and do this by layer now. Pocketing toolpath. We're going to start at 13 because we've already made a 13 millimeter deep pocket. We're going to go to 14. Now make it 15 millimeters deep. We're going to use a little bit of ramping. I don't want to use a 202. I'm not going to use a ball end mill. I'm going to use just a straight flat end mill. And what are we going to cut? Actually, you know what? A ball end mill might give us a good look. I think that's... Uh, I think that's about right. We'll stick with the, the 202 ball. We'll see how that goes. And these are going to be our grills. Let's change the vectors. We'll select by layer and we'll select grills. This is where it's handy to be able to just put anything you want on that layer and then have it cut by the toolpath without having to change anything in the toolpath. Let's duplicate that toolpath. All the settings will be the same. We'll call this the lights. We'll say OK. And now I'm going to drag that up. And I need to edit that operation. I'm going to change the vectors, select by layer, and we'll select the lights layer. And just like that, everything goes from cutting the grills to cutting the lights. Really convenient to be able to do that. You see how we're now cutting the lights. So now we have our initial pocket inset, we have our grills cut, and we have our lights being cut. They're all using ramping because I have Carbide Create Pro. Contour toolpath, yeah, that's going to be the outer cuts. That's going to be all these guys. Let's go ahead and edit that next. We'll say use current selection because we're doing it by group. Outside right is fine. Anytime you're doing a full cutout, go back to your thickness that you put in, that you measured hopefully with digital calipers and do it exactly. So let's just say T plus 0.1 millimeters. That's a great value. It gets through any little tiny variation without really destroying your waste board. I love T plus 0.1 millimeters for all my contour cutouts tabs. I'm going to go three wide and I'm going to go three tall just to be safe. We're going to call this full cutouts and we'll say okay. 58 minutes to cut all those out. Let's, uh, let's use a down cut of our own making because that was his setup before. End mills 251 down cut 24,000 2400 1.25 millimeters, plunge rate 500. I think they'll cut fine based on my own experience. 58 minutes, great. One more thing, add chamfers to what you do. Just add chamfers, take the sharp edges off. It saves you sanding, it saves people cutting themselves. Nobody likes a sharp edge, especially not on something you're gonna be pulling your keys out of or your chapstick or your headphones or whatever it is that you're grabbing. Let's add some chamfers back to the design. And here's where I need a chamfers layer. So I need one more layer, we'll call it chamfers. And I'm only gonna need one of those. We can do it in bright green, that's fine, that'll work. Hit okay. Now let's select all of our outsides. With one click we can do that. We're gonna do offset path and I know that one millimeter is gonna work. Outside, hit apply. We get a whole bunch of new lines. The L key, chamfers, move selection to layer, hit OK, and you can group those if you want. So now we have bright green all around the outside of every one of our trays, just like that. We didn't have to go in and edit each one individually. Bang, all of them are there. Let's go to the inside of our pocket. So we're going to chamfer the outside of the outside and the inside of the pocket so we get a nice round on both of those edges. Same exact procedure here. Offset, one millimeter except inside because that's where we want it now. Hit apply, there they are. L key, move it to chamfers. Move selection to layer, hit okay. And now we have green bracketing both sides, the inside and the outside of the edges of our trays. Let's go ahead and take a look at our tool paths as is, without the chamfers cut in. 
And this is a pretty big sheet. This is a lot of work here. You're talking about 15 drop trays. That's a significant investment of time. And you can see here, you're getting little lines because you're using a bowl bit. You're not getting flat sections because it's a bowl bit. You have to reduce your step over in order to get smooth lines in the bottom of something. And it would have to be a very small step over. There's where you can make a choice time-wise to use a flat end mill to get nice flat bottoms and then chamfer the edge. Don't worry about having a, a concave shape here. Better, I think, to save time on this. So let me switch my tools. Go to end mills. I'm gonna use that same 251 down cut. And I'll leave all the stock settings for now. And hit okay. I'm gonna do the same thing with the lights. Select the tool, soft wood. End mills, 251, down cut. Now let's take a look at our simulation and I'll show you the difference. Because of the shape of the end mill, the step overs matter greatly. You see how much cleaner lines we're getting here. I like that a lot more. I like that time-wise a lot more. I'm gonna go with that. Now how about our chamfers? Right now, we have all sharp edges around any of these trays. And you can sand them. If that's the look you want, you can sand every one of them. I don't want to sand every one of them. I just don't. And no matter if you're using an up cut or a down cut, as those cutters age a little bit, you're going to get extra material along the edge. You're not going to get an absolutely sharp thing. So you're going to have to sand it. If you don't chamfer it, you'll be sanding it more. Let's go ahead and add some chamfers. We'll hide simulation. We want to contour, select by layer again. We're going to go to the chamfers because this will be the inners and the outers. We're gonna go no offset because we created that offset when we set up the offset paths that our chamfers are made of. We've already moved the tip of that V bit right off the edge of the material. I already know that if you move it one off and about two down, you're gonna get a decent little chamfer on there. So our depth of cut is going to be two millimeters, no offset. We don't have to ignore tabs because we're on our own contours and we'll call this chamfers all. And we need our tool. I like the 301, which is a 90 degree V bit. I'm a big fan. Now here's where you can play with the depth of cut and how much total depth you're getting to go for a finishing pass. Nice to do with a V bit, run a small finishing pass. Because of the cutting dynamics of a V bit, they don't always make the cleanest pass first. Let's go ahead and our total depth is two millimeters. Let's go one point eight five millimeters for our depth of cut. So we're going to cut one time at 1.85 and the second time it's only going to cut 0.15 millimeters. It's going to shave a very nice little finishing path on the outer and inner edges. And we're going to speed this up substantially. I'm going to go 1750. I'm going to plunge at 500 because we're not cutting much material here at all. 24,000. In fact, I can probably go a lot faster than that. I'll go at 3000. Hit OK, chamfers all, no offset, all right. And that's gonna come after our full cutouts. We're gonna utilize our tabs to hold everything in there and we're not putting a ton of cutting forces on it. We're gonna do our full cutouts so that the chamfer path is only cutting the edge of the material. We'll show our simulation once again. And now we have a nice little chamfered edge. That is not a big chamfered edge at all. That is just small. You're just taking the edge off of it here you can see that's gonna give us, I think, a nice feel. And you'll know this, you'll use chamfers over time, you'll know, okay, if I go one out, and I go three down, then I get a more beveled edge, and I really like that. Or if I go one out, three down with a 60 degree, I prefer that. It's again, all experience. Wherever you happen to be along the path of CNC, just keep pushing, keep experimenting, always do those things. That looks pretty good to me, that drop tray. Layout is gonna produce pretty good money. I'd say these guys, Jeep drop trays, $30, $40, depending upon the material, depending upon how good you make them look, depending if you fill them with epoxy, or if you personalize them, all kinds of big questions there to be answered about pricing. But we have a layout and a design that I think is better than what the original was. It's more consistent, it's more symmetrical, it's more pleasing for me. It has chamfers, it is machined by layer. It has a lot of pretty good options in there. Let me know in the comments below what other questions you have about this design process, what other things you're working on that you have questions about. It is important to us 
that we're meeting you where you are on your CNC journey and that you're having success with your machines. We'll be back here in the studio with more information, ideas, and inspiration, and more videos.